Hello, everyone. Thanks for listening. It is episode four, bio. Episode four. Four is flying, you know. Flying, isn't it? It's flying. It's the Super Six podcast with Laura Woods and Bio Akin Fenwa. How are you? I'm very well. And yourself, LW, how are you? I'm good. I'm in a great mood. I'm always in a great mood. It's always fun working here with you. I'm looking forward to this podcast. Um, Before we get into it, and we'll tell you what's coming up, um, you've had a busy week, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a busy week. Uh, I've had a busy week. Some good, some Mm. not so good. Um, Yeah, man. I'm all right, man. Yeah? I'm all right. How are you feeling about everything, Bio? Um, listen, I've I've gone on and I've said it numerous times. I'm disappointed with the FA decision. I won't lie to it. I'm disappointed. Um, I felt they had an opportunity to make a stand, especially what's going on in society. I felt like they could have just made a stand of a united front. <clears throat> it's funny and not ha ha funny, funny in the way that you look at it. I've had comments. First, let me say shout out. The support I've had has been immense. So I swear down. And from the bottom of my heart, it's humbling. So thank you for all the people that supported me or that's been supporting me. For those people that's been jumping on, promoting negativity, I kid you not, I've said this many times, It that don't even phase me. Like them people that want to be keyboard warriors or that want to promote hate, that's on you. Do you? For me, it's... Where I look at it, it's, I've had comments saying, come on, big man, like, you, you know, you're stretching, you're reaching, you're, you know, it's about size, this, that and the other, you, you know, you're taking it, you, you, you're being touchy. And like, what made me laugh is when it comes to size, I think I'm the most relaxed individual when it comes to size. When people want to talk about my size, I've said this, my favourite away ground is because 15,000 people said I can from your tits off side so I'm not stressed <laughs> when it comes to my size and when people say the, the the term like you're just jumping on the bandwagon or you're just using the rest I'm like it's not something that's fun I, I don't want to use uh, my colour I, I, I really don't want to so for, for those people I'm like I beg grow up and the second the thing, I'm, the thing that disappoints me the biggest from the FA was they had an opportunity right now to say, look, even if you're saying that you didn't mean it was racist or being racial, it could be deemed as it. So we're going to stamp it out going forward. The FA did a thing where they they don't even allow more than two players to stand around the referee because they wanted to stamp this out and say, listen, we want a more e- exclusive game. We want a more together name. We don't want to be showing aggressive. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to stamp it out. So when they had the opportunity to stamp out this, They didn't. So I felt like I'm disappointed and I felt like they let me down. But in saying that, I don't think you should allow any situation or issue to change you as a person. So it won't change me. I still think the right thing is to do is to report these incidents. But I do want to go on record and I will continue to say I'm disappointed with the FA and I feel like we need change. I think as well, um, one thing that I felt when I heard all this happen and I and I heard the, the decision that they are they acknowledged the fact that that was used though those words were used and that was said but they deemed it not to be racist listen to somebody who is telling you I feel that this is racist yeah. right yes <laughs> listen to somebody yes. else who who is experiencing racism and, and that will help you understand how do we stamp it out if if there are people going no nah, no, I don't think that's racist. Thank you. you know what? That is the biggest thing is, and just to break it down, the story how this was, I never heard this. I never heard him call me this. I was told 24 hours later by members of my club and the staff, and they are white. They felt it was racist. They told me the next day and said, look, B, we didn't tell you that day because we feared of how you would react. So these people were white and felt it. They felt so uncomfortable. They felt so aggrieved that they was like, we had to wait 24 hours of fear of how we re- re- react. And that's the thing when the powers that be want to turn around and say, we know it was said. Mm. We acknowledged it was said. It was admitted that it was said, but we don't deem it as racial or can't prove it's racial. That for me is the most disappointing thing. And people will hear it. You'll have people that be like, you know what? No, stamp it out. And you'll have people that, this is how I know there's just some wrong people because they'll just jump on it and be like yeah. you're being sensitive yeah. uh, get over yourself or x y and i was like you know what wrong is wrong period and right then they had an opportunity to say going forward this is what we want this is the society in and out of the game that we're not going to um, tolerate this sort of terminology used 
but they didn't. And that's for me, just shows you can turn around and say, look, we want the bending of the knee, so the kneel on the knee, we want to have kick it out. We want to do all these sort of campaigns. But when you have an opportunity to make a stance yourself, for me, they let, they let not just myself down, I feel like they let the whole footballing community. And I know that's a big statement to say mm. because there'll some, be some people say, nah, you're reaching, but they do. Mm. If you're talking about wanting to make change, you, the powers that be, had the opportunity to go out there and try and make change or make a statement. And I felt like they didn't. So, you know what? I kid you not, I won't let it change me. I won't let it change my energy. I won't let it change my soul. I won't let it change my smile. But I am disappointed. One more thing that I want to add to that is um, when people in the media talk about racism um, and we are trying to get a certain message across, there are trigger words I've noticed for people who don't want to to listen to yes. these arguments. Um, and to be honest, I don't even consider them arguments. I just consider it a reality. So um, I've noticed that um, privilege is a, tri a trigger word yep. um, and education is a trigger word. Yes. So anytime you say, um, look... People need to be educated on this. Oh, I don't. Well, you don't. I need to be educated yes. on this. Um, white privilege. People don't want to understand what that is. If we are in in this world, and especially in football, trying to the FA, anybody else, any any kind of um, authority, preach to people about racism. Just get your house in order first, and yeah. and and understand that if education is what we're missing. Educate yourself on this. Like, go and understand why this is deemed as racism. Um, that education, that any of that kind of education, shouldn't be deemed as um, as a negative. Education is a positive, and the only way that that this all can move forward is if we all get on the same page and understand why exactly it is negative and why you feel the way that you do when you hear those words. Not just you, anybody. Um, that's why you know. I'm, when I heard it as well, I knew how you'd react and I knew how you'd be feeling about it because I know you. Yeah. Um, and I share that disappointment with you, and I can I can share that I can share it because. We are one and we're the same sort of people. Do you know what I mean? Like we're all the same sort of people. We all like football. We all love football. Yeah. We all enjoy working in this industry. Um, I just, yeah, I just hope that in some way, the way that you've been let down is used as an education, if that makes sense. That's you know what? It's beautiful because I've used that. I've used the trigger word. I've there's trigger words. Yeah. So if I just talk about size people, okay, you know, it's like, nice oh, laughing, it's joking, it's banter. As soon as you put words, exactly, education, if you put racial, all of a sudden, it's a trigger and everybody gets, everybody, I'll take that back, not everybody, mm -hmm. certain people get defensive and all of a sudden be like, you're looking too much into it, or you're this, that and the other, it's triggered. And the biggest thing is, when you say education, it's nothing wrong to be educated. Every day is a learning day. Period. There's no no day going forward where we ha we haven't got the opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. We are all in that process. So nobody's sitting up here saying we've got all the answers. We really don't. But every day is a learning day. So don't get triggered by education. Really don't. Because we do need to educate ourselves going forward because none of us have got all the answers. But LW, listen, we've spoken it. We've hit it. We hope people take this on board and run with it and one day we are united and there is changed um until then boy let me just leave that there before we get in trouble <laughs> shall we tell you what's coming up on the podcast come on lw let's do let's this. do it let's do it so uh, we're going to pick another of our six of the best you know what uh this time it's going to be strikers and you're going to tell me your six best strikers of all time yeah because listen, I, listen. <laughs> last time I did something, I was got jumped on again. But anyway, I back my, I back my decisions. I'll pick my six all-time best. I'll do it this time. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Best strikers. All right, yeah. okay. We're gonna pick our super six aside team of the month for September. One goalkeeper, five outfield players. I got that. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, team of the month. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. I can, I can do that. All right. We're also going to discuss this week's Super 6 fixtures for round four as well. So the prize money's rolled over again. This is difficult. It's rolled over again, so you've got another chance to win £1 million. It's a lot of money. Oh, no, man. And a reminder, it's free to play. It's 
completely free. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. You can get involved in the chat as well. You can use the hashtag Super Six Podcast and you can tweet us at Super Six. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, Bio, um, it's been a very animated week. Yeah. It's been a busy week in terms of conversation about not the actual game, um, but the rules around the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, I ain't going to lie to you. I'm going to have to jump on this. I'm with all these managers out here. Listen, I play the game. And I think the new handball rule is ridiculous. No, and that's, and everybody said this, don't get the game twisted. I think everybody's come. I think when everybody's on a united front, you know there's something wrong. So there wasn't even, you saw Steve Bruce, yeah. who got the point. Don't get the, you know what I'm saying? He got the point, but it's like, look, karma's a, karma's a thing. It's going to come back on us. So I better say it now because, and it's just ridiculous. How can you give handball against Eric Dyer? He's jumping up. In a natural position. See, this is where I'm, they're talking about unnatural. From when you jump, yeah, your your hands are in the position. Mm. When you get elevated, it's in a natural position. But who are they deeming that it's unnatural? So you're giving a handball where it hit him from the back. I just... Listen, man. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous. It's madness, isn't it? It's mad. So I was at that game and um, I was watching it on the touchline, right? And... Uh, and as soon as it happened, Jose was fuming, went straight down the tunnel, came back out again, and, and I have to interview him after the game. And I was like, oh no, and I was getting like a bit kind of, it's a mixture because you're excited because you've got something good to talk about. Yeah. And then you're also like, oh God, is this going to be a bit tricky? Um, he would not commit to it. He wouldn't. And he said um, he said this great line that he would rather give his money to charity um, than to bad mouth the rule and get penalised by the FA. Can I pause you there? Fine. Let me just pause you. You see what the FA's done there? Mm. See, the FA's kind of now stamping out rules about managers or officials talking bad because they'll be like, you know what, I can't even remember the terms, but when they get fined afterwards... Mm. Um, it's not dissent, is it? It's, yeah, it's, it's not um, dissent, but it's... Uh, what, yeah. I, I can't remember whatever... It, I, yeah. I can't remember it. I'm sure tweet us yeah. um, at, at six to let us know what the, the comment is. But <laughs> you know them ones where they... Were, so the now, now the manager's going forward to be like, you know what, I don't even want to pay a fine. So they've stamped it out. So mm. the FA, when they want to, they can. So when they want to commit to something, they can. And that's where it is. But anyway, I just want to pass that in. Roll back again because I was watching the game and I heard your voice. I was hearing you probing Mourinho. You was like, yes, but do I was busting up. God, God, LW, do you think? Do you know what? Do you know what? Um, I love interviewing him. I really do. And the thing is with Jose is that um, we, um, I've probably interviewed him three or four times and I do think he is one of the greatest managers in the game. I, I've, been a fan of him for a long, long time. I used to watch him back in uh, the Chelsea days, 2004-05 era, um, when he first came. Um, I used to go and watch Chelsea a lot. And um, I really like him. I think he's great. And there's one thing that he taught me the first time I ever interviewed him. Um, the press officer said it to me, actually. She said, um, Josie doesn't want your opinion in your question. It's not about your opinion. It never is. And um, that's actually something that I learned through Sky as well. Like, as a reporter... If you're working for Sky or any of those companies, it's not about our opinion. It's about theirs. Um, on radio, it's a little bit different because yeah. it's lighthearted and, and it is about opinion. It's a talk show. It's a little bit different, but not for these things, not for not for Sky. Um, so he taught me that. So um, we had like a little, um, a, uh, an interview, a couple of, it was the end of last season. And I think there was a an incident. Harry Kane should have been given a penalty and wasn't. Can't remember exactly what happened. Um, and um, and Josie was like, well, did you think it was a penalty? And I was like, I can't say. Like, it's, it's all about you. And he was like, no, 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 your, your opinion is important. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 it's really not. It's, it's all about yours. And, um, and it made me laugh in hindsight because I remember thinking about where that came from. And it was Jose yeah. back in the day. It was, yeah. it was Jose that I got that from. Um, look, I've got the most amount of respect for him. I, I think he's brilliant. And you're right. He, he's, all, he's, he's tied in knots about what he can say. But if you think that that's the way that football needs to go with handball rules about that... Like, what are we? We're just going to be talking about these kind of things all week. You've seen what they're like on the continent. They've had this rule for a season more, two seasons more. The amount of penalties they get compared to what we got last season was like triple the same amount. It was, it was a lot. I'm not gonna. I literally think that they are messing up the games a bit strong, but I think they're taking the the essence of what football is. You know, I look, I grew up, and I know I'm coming towards the end of it, but. I think it's nice when, or maybe we're now looking back and thinking human error was a better 
Yeah. Human error was was a better talking point. Like, oh god, I can't believe the referee gave that. Or I'm even t- when I'm watching the game and I see the the new rule about not putting up the the the, the offside flag until the game yeah. runs. So you you're, you're kind of thinking, well, is this game flowing? Or you, and you got waiting for the the chance to finish. And is, is it offside or not? I, literally, I'm thinking, well, are you gonna take away linesmen's in the yeah. end and just go? Yeah. I just I don't get. I understand that. We, we try and evolve in everything we try and do but sometimes if something ain't broke don't try and fix it and that's just where I'm going with the game at the moment I'm like I liked it just being free flowing and it just being natural rather than where they're going now nah, listen I, just, I don't know man I don't know I don't know I don't know but mm. I'm with you I, listen I like Mourinho I do I think he's a character um, I think he's a, an entity to himself Um to be fair, I do think that he, he, not that he lost his passion for the game because I don't want him to jump on me and because I know he listens to this podcast. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want him to jump on me, but I, I felt that when he came in, he was a breath of fresh air. You know, he was very, listen, this is me and that. And then I think that he kind of fell out of love with the game a little bit in the sense of not feeling validated, you know, just being despondent from it. And then he's come back again with this. And listen, I like him because he's confident in what he does, you know what I'm mm. saying? So, mm. um, shout out to Marina. But next time, speak your mind, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't be scared of the FA. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eric Dyer at the weekend made all the headlines and um, he made all the headlines midweek as well. Carabao Cup. Um, Spurs knocked Chelsea out. Round four, they're through to the quarterfinals. But there was a moment in the game and um, I was covering it for Sky. And all of a sudden, the camera just cut to Mourinho and he was dieting himself down the tunnel. We're like, what's he doing now? Anyway, Eric Dyer, it's transpires, um, got caught a little bit short. Yeah, yeah. To run in the dressing room. This is in the second half. Um, and uh, relieve himself, I suppose, is, a, is the right way of saying it. Has that happened to you before? No, listen, luckily, because I can't run as quick as Eric Dyer, luckily, it's never happened to me. But I was watching the game as well. And it's funny because Chelsea was on the tack and there was a big gap in the middle and they was in I'm thinking why is Tottenham not defending (laughs) then I see it cut and Mourinho storming in in the changing room it's like for me of course you don't know and he's thinking but what are you going to you're going to help him finish or you're going to help him wipe or something (laughs) you know what it runs but (laughs) and then he runs back out but the funny thing is when you need look everybody knows when you need to go you need to go what are you going to do like do do on the pitch like you know what I'm saying when you need to go (laughs) you've got to go ask Gary Gary yeah. Lineker. Yeah, them, exactly. Them people there. But the only <laughs> thing is what was a bit weird is like, it didn't seem like he had told the players or his other players because like I said, it was just like there was a big gap in the yeah. middle and he just ran off. So it wasn't like, he said, listen, I need to go fill in sitting behind the ball. That sort of, he weren't really thinking about anything like that. He was like, yo, better out than in. <laughs> I think we'll leave it there. There's not much more analysis we I should know, do of this. Geez. That's that's all that needs to be said. Um, okay, what else have we been out, uh, up to outside of football? I've been moving house, been an absolute nightmare. Um, there was a spider the size of my head. I see that. I see that. Let me say something. Now, yeah. I see it. Like, how did you react? Like, when you first saw it, because, of course, before you, like, film it, yeah. like, you see it, you're like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. How, it, what was the reaction? Do you know what? I actually, I'm not scared of spiders. I don't mind them and I'll pick them up and put them out. I'll never kill them. I can't kill... Yeah, I, yeah, I cool, because we don't advocate killing yeah, here. Yeah, I won't kill them. And I think I'm I'm quite fascinated by them. But this thing, like, it literally, I was moving things out of the way and it climbed up in that way that oh, it looked like a hand. It was literally like, like this. And it was a little moment. I was like, whoa. And then I was filming it, um, obviously, and it just fell down. And basically, I just left it. So yeah. I don't know where it went. See, I'm not going to lie to you. And I'm going to have to, like, I'm, I'm going to admit something live on air. I would have moved out right <laughs> then. I would have gone to a hotel and I would have just, me, like, when they're bigger than my arm, or sorry, my hand, nah, it's not my world. Like, they'd be trying to get me on that. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Like, <laughs> You can keep that. Like Someone tweeted me, Bo, and said, you need to be charging that thing rent. <laughs> it was so big. Yeah, I'm telling you out here, you know what I'm saying? When you be sleeping, it be stroking your face. Oh, you no. go out there, eat your, eat your cereal. Hey, listen, that's your world out here. I do not play 
with them insects. Na, 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 na. So, uh, listener questions. We've already spoken about Mourinho and about the interview that um, I did at the weekend with him. Um, we've had a message from Sean in Bradford and he wants to know um, what the most extreme, angry manager moment that I've ever witnessed is. Um, I personally, they've never been really aggro or anything like that. There's obviously the classics like Roy Hodgson, Harry Redknapp, that sort of thing. Have you ever had a moment? Yeah, um, I, I wrote this in my book. Uh, rather than plug my book ever, like, I'm an author now, so I wrote. But I wrote this story in my book. <laughs> you get me? Um, so um, I was at Torquay. Um, uh, Lee um, Lee Rosinia was the manager. Wow. Um, so we must have played away at Chesterfield and we lost one nil. And every player will know if you don't get on, you have to run afterwards. So yeah. I was losing one nil, and I'm a striker, and I'm thinking to myself, "Bring me on, like bring me on." He didn't bring me on, so. Um, I'm like, we walk, I walk in knowing that I'm going to have to run. I'm taking off my boots and I'm mumbling under my breath. I'm dashing this. And like, so the gaffer, he's like telling the boys, telling the boys off like, oh, it's not good enough, rah, rah. So I'm mumbling to myself like, oh, gosh, I'm going to have to go run. And out of nowhere, he turns to me and goes, and you, you have got a bad attitude. And I'm, so I'm thinking, rah, who's he talking to? And I look up and he's looking me dead in my eyes and he's screaming at me like, Oh, I can f- I can see the veins in his neck. So for me, I was like, wait, I, I look, and I was young, I was petulant at this time, so don't hold this against me now. But I stand up and I'm like, who are you talking about? I was like, who are you talking to? Don't come at me. What? He's like, yeah. I was like, what? You want me to be happy that now after the game, sitting there for 90 minutes, I want to go run. Don't shout at me. So I'm saying that. So at this time, the assistant manager is taking him away. And then he turns round like he wants to come and fight me. That's when I was like, what? So I stand up and like, no. <laughs> this is bad, I shouldn't be saying. But I stand up and said, what? Don't, listen, don't walk away. You're the manager. Don't let them hold you back. If you want me, come at me. So I've stood up now. I ain't got my top on. I'm real tense. And I'm, uh, look, I'm in my feelings right now, with it? <laughs> so that the goalie coach, um, Dearden, Kevin Dearden, who's at Luton, he grabs me, he's like, B. And when I went at Chesterfield, there was like cabins, quarter cabins at the back. So now I'm, he, he, he's like, B, get us. Come on now, come on, come on. So he's got me outside and I'm, I'm pounding up and down like let me at this guy let me at this guy Cause, listen if I'd go at him they would have sacked me straight away because that's how mad I was but that's the angriest I've ever seen a manager like and the angriest I've kind of ever been at them times but anyway let's move on I'm a, I'm a much nicer guy now people I'm mature so anyway let's just that's my angry moment I love the way you just said like oh yeah that's probably like the, the angriest I've ever seen a manager where you literally took your top off and squared yeah, up to I, him. I was I was I was listen I was in my feet I was just thinking but well, listen that like, why are you coming at me like you want me to be happy that I gotta go and run after a game like, listen anyway let, let's just move on swiftly because I'm a nice guy <laughs> all right if you want any more of those sort of um, answers from bio make sure you tweet us at super six um you can also use the hashtag super Super Six podcast. Okay, next up is the Super Six Aside team of the month. Me and Bio are basically choosing six players. One of them must be a goalkeeper. The other five are outfield players um, for the month of September. So basically, we're going to take it in turns. We're going to announce our goalkeeper and you're going to do yours. All right, so if we get the same player, we're going to have to... Yeah, we've got to switch We're going to have to switch it up. Should so, I go first? <laughs> so that's unfair. All right, you know what? Nah, cool. Right. No, nah, no, nah, you go first. Sure? Yeah, you go first. All right, so we're going to go... Uh, top six, one keeper, yeah. five out players, yeah. um, team in a month. All right, you go first. Who's your goalie? Right, my goalkeeper um, is Emmy Martinez. Okay. Now, there's a little bit of Arsenal bias in here. Yeah. Um, but also, I think he's kept two clean sheets since he's been at Villa. He was exceptional for us. I absolutely loved him. I would have kept him ahead of Leno. Um, I know that's quite short-sighted and a little bit fickle of me, but hey, um, that's what I'm like. So um, I'm putting him in here. Um, I think he'll do the business for Villa. They've done some really good business. Very, so very good. Market. I think they're going to be... Yeah. And listen, they're going to be more than okay this season. That's what I think. I think he'll be their best signing because already they were struggling for, for clean sheets last season. Already they've got two under him and I yeah. think he'll be really good. That's not bad. Listen, I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to be biased. I'm going to Ellison, Liverpool. Um, look, reason I'm going that, he made a big save against Lacassette mm. at 2-1 um, against Arsenal. Um, and listen, I know he, um, he let him free in the first game, but he was just playing about, you get me? Uh, <laughs> you know them ones. But I'm going to go with Ellison for my keeper. All right, yeah. who's your defender? Now, you mentioned that he let three pass, and that was in the game at Leeds, okay. um, against Leeds. Um, it was at Anfield, that one, wasn't it? So I'm going to put Luke Ayling. 
Okay. I'm going to put Luke Hayling in there. I think that there's got to be a representative for Leeds. Um, they are doing all right so far. They are. I know it's early days. Um, and I know that they've shipped quite a few. Um, but I think he's been quite impressive. And I think I would be disappointed with myself if I didn't have a Leeds player in my six. See, of the month. You're, 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 you're good. Political. Not, not me, <laughs> uh, even though I said I made a, a debate for oh, 60 seconds I know for Leeds. It's, and Van Dyke. it's going to be Van Dyke, isn't it? And I'm going to have to put Van Dyke, VVD. Listen, let me look. I don't care what anybody says. Thiago came in and broke the most passes in a half against mm. Chelsea with 10 men. And then VV went and broke that against Arsenal. And that's a defender. So look, if you don't want to say anything, say it. But VVD, and I don't care, maybe I am a little bit biased, but the stats speak for itself in that like man mountain. That's my defender, my go-to. So... Keeping on the subject of Liverpool, even though I'm hammering you for Liverpool, I'm going for Binio for that holding role. And the reason I'm doing that is because he's actually not just played that role. Yep. He also dropped back into the centre-back position, partnered Van Dijk, and I think he got man of the match. Yes. So for Binio, um, I think they are a different team without him. I think they are much better with him involved. Yeah, I think he's he was going to be in my team, but then I figured everybody would say, oh, you're just picking Liverpool 1-6. to six. Um, <laughs> You know what everyone So... Um, for me, I I agree with you. I think Fab needs to play. Mm. Um, I went with Yuri Tillemans um, in my midfield. I watched him at Man City, and listen, I thought he was listen. He breaks up play, sees a pass, gets a goal. I can't believe. No, I'm not trying to disrespect like Le- Leicester, but I, f- I don't understand why like an Arsenal wouldn't have got him, mm. and why Tottenham wouldn't have got him. Like that's how good I think he is. So um, Tillemans is in my team. All right, done. Um, let's move a bit further up the pitch. Okay. Um, I tell you what, I'm doing. I'm going to go with Hamas Rodriguez. Good shout. Yeah, um, I've been so impressed with him, and I think that everyone keeps sort of harking back to the World Cup and then and this and that and Golden Boot, blah 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 blah. Um, he's come to the Premier League and he's just hit the ground running and he's been so impressive. The way he picks people out and, and his vision and his passing is in, exceptional. Um, I really like watching Everton and before I wasn't that fussed about them, I've got to say, I, I, I was kind of neither here nor there about Everton. Um, now I really enjoy watching them. Yeah, like I think like uh, the mark of a good player is to get everybody around you playing good um, or playing better. Mm. And I think he does that. The derby's coming up soon and... I'm not going to lie, I'm less confident, even though I'm confident, um, I'm less confident because I just think that they've started the, the season very well and I think confidence is a is a massive thing in this game um, and I think Everton are playing with confidence, so that's a good one. I am going to go with John McGinn for Aston Villa. I think they struggled last season without him. Mm. Um, I like the way he plays. It was a toss-up between him and my boy Grealish. I think Grealish is... Is key to what um, they do, but I think John McGinn, he's just, he's starting, I think he's got a couple of assists, um, and Villa's just added Ross Barkley to their team, so I think that's just going to push everybody again. Um, I think Villa will do, I think Villa will do all right this season. Okay, um, I'm going to go for Andrus Townsend as well next. The reason I'm going to do that is not just because I work with him on TalkSport. Yes, it is. Um, Towards the end of last season, he struggled um, and he was saying that. He was like, he couldn't get his form, he couldn't find his form. This season, it just looks like he's really hungry. Um, He's got a couple of assists, he's got a goal as well. Um, I just think that he's um, he's looking a completely different player. All right, that's not bad. So what's that, 4-4? We picked 4-4? Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm going to go... Don't care what they're saying. I'm going back to Liverpool. I'm going back to Mane. Um, I think Mane's he's class. He's just exceptional. You know, I think he's he's one of our best defenders. How how he wins the ball back, um, scores goals, constant threat. So Mane's in my team. So I'm going to go with Mane. Right, let's pick our last player then. Um, striker, I'm going Calvert-Lewin. Um, yeah, okay. The reason I'm doing that is before lockdown, he was the most informed striker in the Premier League. After lockdown, he lost his way a little bit. I don't think he scored a goal, actually, by yeah, the yeah. Premier League. Um, and now, this season, again, he's just absolutely banging them in. I love the connection that he's got with those players. Um, I just think he looks like... Confidence is that word that you used a minute ago. He looks like a, a player who's really running high on confidence. Um, I think it will... I mean, I think, I hope he gets involved in the England setup. actually. Yeah, listen, I've, I've, I've said this. I think what he's done throughout his career since he's broke in it's he's always showed glimpse it's that consistency and he started this this season you know like you five goals in what three games 
Space and for itself, it speaks it? for itself and the same like you can't look past you know people are going to go on like I'm on the, the Vardy bandwagon and that like like Vardy's my guy guy you know what I'm saying but you got to right now the stats speak for itself five goals in three games so I'm going to put Vardy at the moment in my team so that's my that's my team Vardy up top alright that is it that is our Super 6 aside team of the month Okay, so to recap, my Super 6 team of the month is Emmy Martinez in goal, Luke Ayling, Fabinho, Andres Townsend, James Rodriguez and Calvert-Lewin. Not a bad team. I think my team's slightly better. It's Ellison in goal, VVD, centre-back. Then I'm going to have Yuri Tillemans. I've got John McGinn, Marnie and Vardy. All right, not bad, not bad. Bio, two weeks ago, um, we compared the legendary status of Vardy and Drogba and you, to- you took a lot of flack for it. Yes, they were coming for me. So in the wake of that, um, what we want you to do is pick your six best Premier League strikers of all time oh, and explain why. Y'all lot are stressing me. See, I think that's hard, LW, because I think it's a, per- it's a personal one because if you just literally got enough stats... And goals scored, you would list up the top six. And the top six, if I recall, is Alan Shearer, Rooney, um, Andy Cole, Aguero, I think, is four. Lampard, I think, is five, which is crazy because he's a midfield. Mm. And I think Henri, six. So just for goals alone and Premier League, you'd pick that six. But again, I think different strikers mean different things to different people. Um, So I actually would go... Alan Shearer one, not not sorry, I won't put it in the order, but I'll take Alan Shearer, Wayne Rooney, and Andy Cole. I would put in that three. Yeah. And then it starts getting hard because I've already talked about. I think Aguero's exceptional as a striker, um, but then also Fowler's my guy as well because I grew up watching Robbie Fowler. And then I know Ian Wright. I think sits nineteenth. I think he scored one hundred and thirteen goals, which. Is the foal scored more than him? Les Ferdinand scored more than him, but I just think Ian Wright as a person and just everything about him, he gets into it. So I'm gonna go Alan Shearer, just because 260 goals, you, can't is, you just can't argue. There's just not even an argument. I don't care what anybody says. It's not an argument. Wayne Rooney again for what Wayne Rooney's done and what he's done. He's second, so you can't argue with that. Mm. And the worst thing is, I actually don't, and this is just maybe me, I actually don't think Andy Cole gets the props that he should do. Um, and people may jump on me and say, you know, he does and that. And if he does, fair enough, good. But I don't think he, he gets talked about enough. Mm-hmm. So Andy Cole, I'm going to put Ian Wright. I'm going to put Henri, just because Henri, I just think, was exceptional. And then it's a toss-up between Aguero, Fowler and... The foal for me. So I'm going to sit on the fence for the sixth one. So the five for me will be Shearer, Rooney, Andy Cole, Ian Wright, Henri, and then I sit on the fence with Fowler, Aguero, and the foal. I mean, to be honest, that's quite a good list, isn't it? It's mud, it's mud. And that's just stats. You're just talking, you're going off stats mm. itself. Like, you can't knock stats. And it's like a striker's there to score goals. If a striker can get assists, good. That adds to his pedigree. But a striker's there to score goals. So if at the end of it, when he sits down as an individual accolade, he's there and he's top three in the the list, top one, you you can't knock it. But then football's what it is and it's beautiful because it's opinions and it's nostalgia and it's what that player meant to them at the time Mm. where they was in their life. So you just equate it to that. No Um, joke, no, it's, yeah, yeah, put me there, no joke, man. There's no Vardy there neither. I'm just letting you know. There's no Vardy there neither. <laughs> yeah, but who would have uh, made the list first? Drogba. Really? Drogba would. Like, you come back on it. No, 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 it's not. This is what I'm saying. This is I've, I've just said what I said. It's that I, when I watch Drogba play, I get a buzz. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? But he's strong. and mm. You know, he's, all the goals he scores and the way he headers. And that's just what I relate to. And I'm like, yeah. Like if I was to play like anybody, it would be like Drogba. I've scored a couple goals like Drogba. I held them off in my arm, on my chest. and But like I said, 
the, the, my biggest thing with the whole Vardy drug bar is I just felt people were dismissing the debate. Like, say, oh, you can't even. And I was like, well, mm. his goals speak for itself. So you can't dismiss what somebody's done in the Premier League, you know. But like I said, and I've said this, if I had to pick between the both of them, I'd pick Drogba just because I relate to Drogba's style of play more. But with that list, I just... Um, Jogba, Jogba would be on the bench for me for that, you know what I'm mm. saying? So would Vardy. Vardy would be on the bench as well. It's, yeah. weird, it's weird in the Premier League now, isn't it? Not weird, but the way that that kind of, the number nine role changes. Yes. You look at something like a Firmino, the, the false nine. I know some people don't like the sort of the false nine phrase, but the, the role of that number nine is evolving a little bit, isn't it? With different formations. Yeah, see, Firmino will never get the goals, mm. like in a sense, to be in that list. But how important he is to this Liverpool team going forward. It's football's a selfish game. So to get unselfish players for the better of the team, it's unique and it's rare. So for everything Firmino does for the collective, he may not be he may, may be overlooked on the individual, but when you watch the game, all the players that play with him will say, listen, he needs to be on the pitch. So it's evolving, it's changing. And sometimes that's why I think you just can't look at stats sometimes. So I get the argument people say, oh, well, mm. you know what? You just can't look at stats because some people do more, you know, distance covered, which of course I don't cover that much distance when I play, but <laughs> you know, other people say it's important. Um, but yeah, it's evolving and it's changing, but that's it's, it's, that's, that's a hard, it's a hard number six, but I, I, I stick with my strong five and then the other three, I can just debate with. One more question on this. Who would be your ideal strike partner? Oh, oh. I think with the way I play, I think me and Henri would have killed it. Or me and Wrighty. I think Wrighty would get a bag load of goals mm. if me and him played up top. Um, but then I do think Henri would allow me to score some goals just because he's he, everything he did sort of thing. So it'll either be Henri or... Right. That's two Arsenal players. Oh, sorry. OK, it's down to business now. It's time for our Super 6 score predictions for round four. If you've not got involved yet, here's a quick reminder of how to play. Download the Super 6 app, create an account and play for free by predicting the scores of six chosen matches to be in with a chance to win £1 million this week. And a reminder, it's free. All right, so Wesley Jones from Dudley managed to score 27 points. If he correctly predicted... Derby Reading, so Reading winning 4 0, he'll now be a millionaire. Oh, Wesley, I feel your pain. He went for 2 1 to Reading, which still scooped him a smart £6,000. I said, that ain't bad. Consolation prize, that's not bad. So the £1 million jackpot remains in place. Women are actually bossing it overall in the Super 6 League. So big shout out to Rachel Jackson. She's joint top. And Amanda Hornsby is in the top three. So congratulations. Congratulations. To Lee. Jay, 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 Jay. Also, a reminder, um, we have our Super 6 League, so you can join using the code SUPER6, and there's a £1,000 prize money for the winner of that league. Andrew Wilshaw and Alistair Gatchel are currently joint top of the Super 6 podcast lead. They have 35 points, but it's very tight at the top. But how did you get on last week? Yeah, man, I shut it down. Yeah, yeah, come on now. Man got seven points. Mm. What did you get? Ah, uh, six. Yeah, yeah, you see? Uh, yeah, yeah, hey, listen, yeah. LW, we're rubbish at this game. <laughs> no, I thought you were uh, going to pick yourself up. I nah, man, crazy. we're rubbish at this game. Like, like really poor. What? Why are we doing this? I just, I, the worst thing is, I'm, I like to back myself and say I'm good at most, but this is the fourth. We're, we're terrible. We can't defend the indefensible, can we? Mad thing. I know how you got, like, one more point than me this week, but... Your overall for the season 17 and mine's 19. I'm catching you. I'm catching you. I'm clawing. Still in the lead. No, we're, no anyway, I call. Until next week, I'm telling you, I'm mm. putting it out there. I'm going to go. I'm going to go in the lead next week. All right. Now, remember, you can invite your mates uh, to join Super 6. And if any of your invited friends go on to win the jackpot, then you will win £25,000. Uh, we have actually had a question that relates slightly to this from Paul Smith. He says, Bio, who's your best mate in football? Laura, yours in the football industry. You go first, Bio. No, 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 no. Don't put me on that because all my people's listening to this. So when, <laughs> I, so when I put their names out and I don't say their names, they're going to be like, I thought we was tight. So I'm going to have to go. You go. Who's your best? Who's your best mate in the industry? Um, I've got a couple. Okay. I work with Darren Ben. I would say two or three times a week. Yeah. Um, and he's just one of the 
nicest people in my life. I think the world of him. He works so hard and he always learns. He's a really quick learner. Um, I really just like working with him. You know, early mornings can be difficult in talk sport. Um, and he brightens up the room when he comes in. He comes in at 8 a.m. We've already been on air for two hours. Lazy. Um, and then I work with him on Sky as well. And um, there's certain people that you work with that make you feel quite at ease and it brings out the best in you. You're one of those people as well, actually. Um, and we just get on really well. So if I say, you saw my I say face, Darren, like, if they caught my face, it would have went black and white and then that song would have been like, Hello, Hello darkness, my no friend. Because I'd have been like, Oh, Darren Ben, yeah? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah? Oh, not, not, not bio, yeah? I say not, no, I'm playing, I'm but playing. But, I'm but playing. to be fair, <laughs> I'm now working with you more than Darren, so no. maybe you just edge it a little I bit. I say that. No, don't okay, give yeah, me, yeah. Don't yeah, give me them crumbs. It's cool. You said d Ben. it's cool. Take it out there, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Darren Ben, you can have it. Y'all two be cool, cool. Who's yours? Come on. Uh, mine's odd. <laughs> um, I've got a few. To be fair, I've got a few in the game. Um, Miles Weston, um, we played together at. Chillinan played together at um, Wickham. The kids get on. That's one. Giles Colk, we played together at Northampton. Still fam type friends now. Um, I've got I've got a few. Darius Charles, you know, I did, I've got a few. Tom Elliott. There's a few that I would say, you know what, after football, you know what I'm saying, would would continue to still jam and, you know, so I've got a few. But if I was to say, I probably, I'd have to be Miles Western, you know, we've we, we've done the family vacations, we took the oh. kids away sort of thing. So I'd say in the game, Miles Western, if I didn't name you, look, we're all tight, but they just put me on the spot, you get what I'm saying? And I just chat to Westy on the way into this morning, so I'm going to say Westy. All right, Paul Smith, there is your answer. Next up, we are doing our fixtures for round four. Boom. We're going to go through these as quickly as we possibly yeah, yeah, yeah. can. This is me now. This is what's going to happen. This mm. is the results because I'm getting my points up this week. All right, mm. cool. We spang it through like, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, what's yours for Everton Brighton? Everton Brighton, I'm going 3-1. Um, Everton, three out of three. Perfect start to the season. Rodriguez, Cabot Lewin, as I mentioned, on fire. Um, Brighton lack a little bit of quality in the final third, so 3-1 for me. All right, I'm going to go. 2-1 Everton I think even though they do lack a bit of quality I do think defensively then they're, they're okay um, I'm with you but I'm going to go 2-1 I'm going to go 2-1 Everton I think Everton will win it you're right they've started very confidently even though I like Lamptey at mm. um, Brighton I think he's just he looks like he's got this Great. energy um, dunk as well so I do think it will be 2-1 Everton Okay, Brentford, Preston. Um, I'm going 2 0 here. Preston missing one of their best players. Next up, Forest, Bristol City. Forest is struggling. Bristol City have been amazing. Um, three wins out of three. I'm going to say 3 0, Bristol City. Oh, wow. um, even though I do think Forest are struggling, I do think it's going to be uh, the highest scoring game. I'm going to go 2 2 um, in this game. I think they will find their scoring touch. So I'm going to say 2 2. Okay, Brentford, Preston, next one up. Yeah. Um, I'm going to think I don't think Brentford's scoring as many goals as they were of course they've lost their main man Ollie Watkins, um, Watkins um, but Tony did get off the mark scored a penalty last week so I'm going to go Brentford 1 Preston 0 do you know what? For the same reasons, um, I actually, even though they've lost Ollie Watkins, I'm going to say 2-0 Brentford. OK. Yeah. Uh, Middlesbrough Barnsley? I've gone 2-0 Borough, actually. Um, Warnock's back on the touchline. You know that actually he's stronger on the road, but I kind of feel for this one, this might be the fixture um, where they get that win at home. I'm going to go... 1-1. One, one. I don't think it's going to be mm. high scoring at all. I think Barnsley will get their first goal this week. Um, of course I do because I said 1-1. One, one. So I'm going to go 1-1 <laughs> one, one, Middlesbrough, <laughs> Barnsley. Sheffield Wednesday, QPR. I've gone 1-1 one, one for that one. What have you gone? I've gone 2-1 Wednesday. Um, I think Wednesday will slightly edge it. I know Gary Monk is the manager. Mm. I know they've got the points deduction, but I do think they're going to, at home, I think 2-1 Wednesday. Okay. Uh, last one, Blackburn, Cardiff. I have gone 2-0. Um, Blackburn has gone... Scoring a lot of goals, aren't they, Gee, lately? Listen, you know <laughs> what? I got it way wrong. They they whooped us 5-0, whooped Derby 4-0 and made man feel much better because <laughs> Derby's a massive club and they got their ass whooped. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to say 3-1. I don't think they're going to score that much, as many as they have, but I do think it'll be a Blackburn win. So 3-1 Blackburn. OK, let us know what your predictions are and why. Uh, you can use the hashtag Super6Podcast. 
bio, the Super 6 podcast, is available on Amazon. Did you know that? I knew that. See, now you could be cooking food in the kitchen mm. and you can say, Alexa, play Super 6 podcast and you could hear our voices. Yeah, they're also giving away five Echo Dots for Super 6 to celebrate this. Terms and conditions, of course, apply, as they always do. Visit super6.skysports.com for more details. ALW, we've come to an end for this week. Thank you for listening, people. Uh, don't forget as well to like and subscribe to make sure you stay up to date with the Super 6 podcast. And you can join in the conversation as well on Twitter. Use the hashtag Super 6 podcast and follow us at Super 6. All right, yo, me and LW are going to be back next week. All right, peace and love, people. Thank you. Hey, yo. Bye. Bye.